we, uh, for all the people who are new, I just want to tell you why we do what we do. It's very important to understand. I used to be very active in the commercial fertilizer business at a very large scale in Asia, working for a large company, chemical company. And being young and being very passionate about farming and earth and feeding the world and growing good food, you know, I was very deep into chemical fertilizer. Because I did not know at that time how long-term use of chemical fertilizers can actually destroy the soil. And these are very deep subjects to understand. And I would request your attention to some of the things where I will say it is really important to understand. Chemical fertilizers work very well up to a certain stage. And then a time comes when chemical fertilizers actually start to destroy the soil structure. And as the soil structure collapses, problems start. Weeds come in gardens that are weak gardens. Pest comes in gardens which are not up to the par in terms of their mineral content in their tissue, in their tissue. So, God has given insects the ability and disease, the ability, the ability to understand if this is the right victim for me to go and attack or is this something which is going to fight back. Now, animals, humans fight back with in a physical way. Plants fight back chemically. Pla plants fight back through organic proteins which are poisonous for the insects. They fight back with minerals which are poisonous for the insects and for the, for the, for the fungus or for the worms. So a healthy plant and it's not a perfect world, but a healthy plant has the capability to fight off even up to 100% of the disease. 100% of the disease. If you grow 10 tomato plants in 10 different environments, but out of those 10, one has the best nutritional package and one has the most it's called cellular strength, the strength of the cells. And you put those plants in a greenhouse and you leave lots of aphids, jacids, whitefly, thrips, powdery in that greenhouse. Of course, they will thrive. But that one plant that has not been grown on wrong fertilizer will not get affected or will barely get affected. And that is the power of good nutrition. Chemical fertilizers cannot do that. I'm not saying chemical fertilizers are bad. We also use, when I use the word chemical, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to synthetic fertilizers. I'm referring to synthetic fertilizers. They are not bad because urea comes from the earth. Urea is nothing but liquefied nitrogen from the air. Air has 78% nitrogen. When air is liquefied and cooled down by mixing it with methane gas, when methane gas and air are fused together in a liquid form and cooled down, it turns into urea. Right? So out of the 78% of the nitrogen that is in the air, in a granule we capture 46% nitrogen. So I'm not saying it's bad, but it's overuse is bad. There are some terms that I would really like you all to understand today. What are their long-term implications? And one of those terms is pH. One of those terms is EC. EC or SS, soluble salts. EC or soluble salts. 
I would really like you to understand these two terms today. What are their long term implications of EC and soluble salts? So, I started this company with the vision that we can that we can provide food not just in a synthetic form which can make the plant grow too big too quick and a lot i call it a lopsided plant which doesn't know how to control its vegetative growth and how to control its reproduct reproductive growth because it is confused in its edge it's getting all kind of signals uh, you know uh, just like you know i'll it's a it's sort of a good example, but I'll share it. A person who is, God forbid, who is on drugs, right? When that person unfortunately takes drugs, they send different signals to the mind. Right? And the person is technically helpless, right? People say bad things about them, they are technically helpless. They need help. Similarly, a plant that is grown on a straight and excessive chemical fertilizer is helpless and it needs help. So, I grew up on a farm working with my own hands and I'm very proud of it and I still do. And I'm not a white collar executive, I'm a blue collar guy, you know, and I'm very proud of my heritage. Uh, I come from a small village in Pakistan, but I had the, uh, the pleasure of getting one of the best educations in my schooling. I went to a military school, which actually hires kids from grade one so that they can condition their mind. So I went to that military school and I studied there with utmost level of discipline. And, you know, and the way I grew up in the village, went to the school, had a very big impact on how I see the world. So, all disease, all disease, all problems, they start from food. And unfortunately, as a global community, we have compromised one thing. And what is that one thing? We have compromised our food completely. Completely. Right? And it is this compromise of food that has led us to so many diseases. I go to colonies, a lot of colonies, I go to other farms, I do public talks, and you know what, people come to me, and there's so many people who have rashes in their skin, in the, in the scalp, who have eczema, who have breathing problem, who have this and this, but you wonder, they are living off the land, they are working in the land, they are drinking good water, they are drinking apparently good food, but how come they are all sick? Or so many of them are sick? It is because of the unknown agents that we are ingesting in our food. Yeah, through our food. We may be eating good, but we may have fed something very bad to the cow. So it came into the cheese and the milk and the, and the whey. And we end up using it because cows digest in no time when you, when you give them food. Right. Uh, so, growing up the way I grew, I realized that natural food is the best thing that you can do to your body, natural foods. Because natural foods are in sync, they are in sync with your bodily systems. When we use a natural food that our body is designed to chemically identify and it identifies it, it breaks down very easily, right? But when we take a compound, when we take a compound which is man-made, which is man-made compound, that, for example, benzene, benzene, when we take benzene in food or uh, sodium metabisulfate, or potassium permanganate or sodium benzoate right when we take these compounds and these food colors which are different 
codes of food colors. Our body does not recognize them because our body works exactly the same way as a scanner, as a scanner in a soil laboratory or a scanner in a tissue laboratory, plant tissue laboratory, because they scan the minerals and they know exactly how many ppm are there in a sample. Similarly, our body scans what we eat and whatever our body cannot recognize, it throws it, uh, throws it aside and it goes into the fat of the human body. It goes into the fat of the human body where it is stored and it has the capacity to cleanse it either through sweating or by physically passing it out of our body. But a point comes when it exceeds the ability of the body to expel it. And that, that is the time when these accumulations gather in our body, especially in the fat. And this leads to different disorders in the body. I am actually, I'll just share this one more thing and then we'll go to it. I'm actually helping a friend of mine who is my childhood friend. We went to the same school and he's fighting a stage four cancer, stage four cancer, pancreatic cancer. And the doctors have told him, doctors told him two months ago that you have three weeks to survive. So I put him in contact with a doctor in Malaysia who is a doctor who is a naturopath but her research is on mushrooms. Her research is on mushrooms and she's a global authority on mushrooms. She knows every species, every chemical, every enzyme that is and with those products and neem, neem juice and Indian blackberry juice, blackberry, it's a, it's a very alkaline fruit. We have been able to make his tumor actually shrink. It's actually shrinking. And the doctors are surprised beyond belief. How come this guy has not, this person has not perished or died so far, passed, passed away so far? They gave him three weeks max. And he's recovering. Before I used to call him, I could not hear his voice. And now he talks like a normal person. There is a little bit of weakness, but he thinks he's recovering. So, I'm just telling you, do not underestimate the power of your food, because the food that you grow is what defines the health of your colonies and farms. And liver, as we always say, liver is our first brain. If our liver is at peace, our mind will be at peace. So it is absolutely important to understand the quality of food, not just the quantity of food, quality of food. So I started this company with the vision to provide a safer alternative, a natural alternative to gardening. And that's why I do what I do. And that's what I wanted to communicate to all of you. That's why I do what I do, so that we can grow the best quality food with the best known ingredients in the world. And our ingredients are so unique, so unique, that there is no company in the world, and I'm proud to say this, humbly proud to say this, that uses these kind of products in their manufacturing. And that's why I travel the world, I find the resources, and I bring them here. I'll tell you about one resource. We use bad guano. Bad guano is droppings of bats, bats from caves which have been there for thousands of years. And they turn into a soft rock phosphate. It's not manure because it's thousands of years old. It's been mineralized. And if you do the analysis of that product, it has 28% phosphorus, it has 30% calcium, it has all trace minerals that you want. Iron, copper, zinc, manganese, molybdenum, selenium, iodine, everything. 
So when you grow food with these kind of products, they go into your food. And when I talk to gardeners, and I, you know, talk to a lot of gardeners every day, at least 65 to 70 percent of my calls are gardener calls every day. And I hear things. They say the, the quality is extraordinary. We are still eating uh, tomatoes, you know, three months after harvest or two months. We are still have our onions. We still have our carrots. It's been a year. And potatoes are solid. And, you know, they are not showing any signs of disease or stress. They are not going soft. Why? Because we have grown our food in as perfect an environment as we could have. 